Hello and welcome to Half Time Report. I'm Sonia and joining me today is Mangala Malu. Well, it is a very, very quiet day so far of trade. But of course, we do know that it comes on the back of a lot of losses for the market. Five days straight, the Nifty has been under pressure. And even today, although the headline index may look flat, we've come off quite a bit from the highs of trade. The sell on rally uh, strategy is something that's intact. The bears have been in complete control of this market for many days. There's no recovery in the bank Nifty either. Let's see how the the rest of the day shapes up but for now it looks like you know um it's a bit on the back foot for the bulls. It is a bit on the, the back foot for the bulls and it's also middling ground right now, right? Uh, we're in the middle of a Friday after a big decline, start of a new series, a lot of triggers for this series as well. March is usually known to be one of those big moving series, right? March 2020, we had the COVID-related impact, so the Nifty was down about 3,000 odd points. Thereafter, the Nifty was down 700 points, but the last March, March 2022, we saw an up move of almost 1,200 odd points. So, it's not a series for the faint-hearted. Yeah. Uh, before, uh, so is, is this the calm before the storm or not is something that we will know. But today, we have the mid-cap index, which oh, is... Oh, is the storm underway? Because it's been five underway. days already, yes. right, for the market uh, collecting. Totally. But we've, we've seen a thousand-point decline in the last three yes. months already. So, we will monitor things as uh, they go. The Nifty Bank, however, holding above that 40,000 mark, the Nifty Bank around 17,500. So, it's actually the perfect time to, uh, you know, talk about coffee. We have uh, CCL Products, the first corporate on our show. The stock has had a decent run in the last one year, 30% uh, on the stock price move. Uh, the third quarter performance was also in line with street expectations. The coffee business reporting four times profit, of course, uh, due to, you know, income tax, other income, etc. But we do have with us uh, Chala Srisanth, who is the MD of the company joining us. Chala, always a pleasure speaking with you. Uh, recently, you met a bunch of analysts as well. Um, just trying to understand uh, your uh, volume growth for the fourth quarter because the third quarter, of course, was impacted by a couple of shutdowns as well. What are you targeting this time around? Uh, so actually, whatever volume growth that we have projected for this year, we are on track for that. We project about 20 to 25 percent. We'll be closer to the 25 percent mark uh, because this uh, quarter, the Vietnam facility is also coming online. So we'll have some additional uh, output that's going to come because of that. Okay. Uh, so what in terms of additional output, I mean, what are you looking at? I think you said that you would end FY23 with about 200 crore revenue in the branded business particularly. Uh, the volume growth guidance was about 20 to 25 percent. I'm sure you hold on to that. But uh, what is the outlook for FY24? What kind of growth could you do? So, uh, FI24, it's a bit too early for us to comment right now. Sure. I think after this year ends, uh, next uh, quarter, we'll be able to comment better. Uh, but we are looking at definitely a double-digit growth. Uh, uh, at least 15 to 20% is what we are internally targeting. And if, the, if things are favorable, it might cross that as well. 20% growth uh, in FI24 volumes. Obviously, this uh, comes on the back of a lot of uh, the expansions that you've planned, etc. as well. But Chala, you know, uh, I'd like to uh, speak to you apart from the coffee business, which is a pretty straight uh, ad capacity, ad clients, run capacity, make money sort of business, to a new vertical. I mean, you are increasing your focus towards the FMCG business as well. You've announced uh, the demerger. Uh, just from a skill set standpoint, I mean, how is it different? Are you adding some management talent out there? Are you looking to increase distributors? Because uh, business-wise, both of them are chalk and cheese, right? What are your plans there? So we are creating a separate team and this team is also focused on uh, introducing products, sampling. So there are a lot of common services that are there between the various uh, verticals that are there. And there is a dedicated team also that's focused on these products, like the mock meat products. So the response has been quite good. So we are introducing in new cities as well and uh, expanding over there as well. And what categories are you looking to enter? I mean, mock meat, of course, very niche and very early stage as well. Coffee mm -hmm. is a big category, but then again, you have established players out there. What are the other mm -hmm. categories? I, I'm, uh, you know, I read you are looking at some adjacencies as well. Are you looking at cookies? Are you looking at cake? Are you, <laughs> what is it? What goes with coffee? I don't think I could comment on that right now, but uh, maybe in the next couple of months, we should be in a position to announce something. Okay, in the next couple of months, looking at some announcements yeah. from CCL products, we'll be waiting for that. Uh, can you tell us, you know, you had mentioned that your new Vietnam capacity will be commissioned by Q3 of FI25. And it will be driven by spray dried coffee. Now, I, I just want to understand that, uh, you, know, you know, overall for your margins, will that, uh, you know, will it be a hit 
Also, going forward, what is the average that you're looking at in terms of an operational band uh, for CCL products, not just in the next year, but over the next couple of years? Uh, so, as far as uh, spray dry is concerned, compared to freeze dry, the margins are uh, slightly lesser. Okay. Yes. Oops. And uh, we we are also going in for a freeze dry expansion uh, in Vietnam. And this freeze dry expansion also is expected to be completed in 2024. So, that will average our margins to more or less the same levels that we have uh, we've had in the past. Right. Uh, you know, 60,000 ton volume by FY26 end is your projected target. Um, what uh, roughly would be the EBITDA per ton out there? So, it's actually about 77,000 tons that we will have uh, as a group for mm. India and Vietnam uh, put together. And uh, the EBITDA, so EBITDA per kg is approximately in the range of about 100 rupees or so. So, is... we're not looking at much of a change over there. Exactly. And so that is basically, uh, you know, standard and it is uh, maintained uh, throughout, right? So that's about yes. lakh rupees per ton and yeah. multiply that by uh, 77,000. That's your volume target, right? Yeah. So that's the kind of EBITDA that you're looking at in FY26. And the FMCG Correct. business, once again, um, uh, you know, uh, what kind of revenue targets that you have out there? Of course, you've given us a target for your branded business, but the adjacencies, are you targeting any sort of revenue mix there? And how much are you willing to invest without making profit for growth here? So right now, the we've already had a break-even for our domestic business and uh, we're looking at growing in a profitable manner going forward. Uh, the, the focus is still going to be on volume growth. So uh, it's not that uh, we're going to let go of the volume growth uh, as a primary focus. And whatever new products that we are introducing, depending on the product category, we are allocating a budget specifically for that particular category. And we're evaluating the performance and then we'll take a call whether we want to further up the budget or uh, reduce it in the subsequent year. Okay, got it. Uh, we'll leave it at that, Chalas. Thanks a lot for joining in and talking about uh, one of our favorite topics, coffee, <laughs> and the growth <laughs> that you're seeing.